Welcome to video two of the FDOT State Final Estimates Office Trimble Business Center video series. This video will cover the steps required to import project files as a surface and calculate the volumetric subsoil quantities between surfaces by generating an earthwork report. If you still need to download and set up the Trimble software, be sure to watch video one first. Since subsoil is typically calculated by comparing the original existing surface to the surveyed bottom of subsoil surface, we will need the CAD files for both the original plan terrain and the surveyed subsoil for this comparison. The original existing surface could be the same as the designer's original plan terrain or the CEI's pre-construction survey depending on if changes have been made. The designer's original plan terrain should be labeled as existing in the CAD folder for the project in the collaboration site. The subsoil survey file should come from the CEI inspector or a survey company hired by the CEI. If the files that are needed are not available or initially provided by the designer, contact the designer to request these files and copy in the district. Note that Trimble can import various file types for the survey information. However, 3D and XML files will require less work when importing. You can refer to the department or Trimble websites for a list of file types used by Trimble. Once you have saved the files to your hard drive and have completed the initial steps in video 1, you are ready to create a new project in Trimble. In this video, the project is located in the North Datum. Select the appropriate Datum template, then select OK. The next step is to import the files into the new project, which should be saved onto your computer. For this scenario, we will import the original existing surface first. Select Import from the top ribbon, which will open the Import folder. Click on the ellipsis and navigate to the location of the folder where the files are stored. All of the files will be shown in the import window. We will select the existing surface and click import. We will be prompted to choose how to import the surface. We recommend importing using the triangle base definition. Also check the apply to all unresolved conflicts of this type box and then select import. If there are any import errors, you'll get a pop-up box. You can choose to view the import summary or not. Once imported, we need to make sure the surfaces are classified appropriately with the right naming convention. We will select the surface and then right-click on the surface to select the properties. The property pane will open and we will rename the surface existing. Then we will select the surface classification that best fits the surface. We can also change the color of the surface to better distinguish it from the subsoil surface. The subsoil file we will be working with for this comparison is in a text file format which will need to be imported correctly for Trimble to accurately place the surfaces and calculate the quantities. As shown here, this text file is set up in Notepad with each point having five fields which are a point ID, northing, easting, elevation, and station, all separated by commas. This is how the file must be imported into Trimble for the surface to be placed in the correct location and orientation. Going back to Trimble, we will now import the subsoil file. Select the Project tab, and then Import. You will notice the subsoil file type in the Import pane shows as unknown. If we try to import the subsoil file as we did the existing surface, we will get an error stating that a suitable importer could not be found. So we need to create a template for Trimble to follow in order to import this file as a surface. Within the Project tab, select Import Format Editor. The Editor window will open and click New. I will name this new format Text, then click Next. The type of formatting will be delimited, meaning the data is separated by commas, spaces, and tabs, so choose that option and then Next. Now we classify what type of delimiter we have, which in our case, the data is separated by commas, so choose that option. From this window, we want to also choose to store this data as a surface and set the default file extension as text, then click Next. The Fields window will allow us to add the five fields as they appear in our text file. As mentioned earlier, we have five fields, which are the point ID, the northing, the easting, the elevation, and the station, which will be the description. After adding these fields, we will choose our respective units as U.S. Survey Feet, Apply to All, then select Test. 
In the new pane, select the ellipsis and navigate to the subsoil file location and select Open. This will allow you to verify that the data columns have been identified correctly in the preview pane. Once verified, click Import. It will prompt you to save the changes as a definition. Choose Yes. As a reminder, you may want to change the name, classification, and color of the subsoil surface to distinguish it from the existing surface. Now that the subsoil file has been imported into your plan view, on the Project tab, you can open the View Filter Manager to turn layers on and off. Looking at just the subsoil file, you can see this is actually two separated areas of subsoil on the project, but they are tied together by web triangulation lines. We do not want the area within these lines to be compared to the existing surface, and there are several ways we can separate these areas. One way would be to separate the points in the text file by grouping each area individually based on the stationing. You could cut out one of the areas and save it as another text file and then import both of the areas individually. Another way would be to draw polylines around each of the subsoil areas and use the new layers as boundaries when calculating the volumes, which is what we will do in this video. We will draw a polyline around the top subsoil area first. Click on the CAD tab and choose Polyline. In the Create Polyline pane, we will name the line Subsoil 1. In the drop-down menu, under Layer, click New Layer. Then we will name the new layer Subsoil 1. Choose a line color and change any other properties for the new line, and then click Close. You do not have to specify an elevation for this polyline, but you can choose how the line closes on the following drop-down. Now click in the Specified Points box and choose the points surrounding one of the subsoil areas to form a completely enclosed line around the area. And then click Close. Repeat these steps to enclose the second area of subsoil, either by using the same layer or a new one depending on whether you want to calculate all the subsoil or the two areas individually. We will use two separate layers for this video. Now that both surfaces are imported and we have created polylines around our subsoil areas, we can run an earthwork report to calculate the volume of earthwork between the two surfaces. Click on Surface from the top ribbon, then select Earthwork Report. In the new window, select Surface to Surface for the report type, then select the two surfaces to be compared using the drop-down menus under Select Surface, then select Boundary Options and choose By Layer, then select the subsoil layers that the boundaries were created with. The volume breakdown will already be selected as volume totals only. Click OK to generate the report. The Earthwork report will show the volume and area totals for the areas we labeled as Subsoil 1 and Subsoil 2. These totals can be added together to determine the total subsoil volume, which can be compared to the designer's quantities for verification. Now that you have completed Video 2, you can use the FDOT Trimble Handbook and other Trimble resources to compare surfaces and calculate volumes using Trimble. If you have any questions, please contact your district final estimates manager or the state final estimates office.